All right, this is section 4.5, exponential growth, MDK modeling, modeling data. I'm going to start with example one. And all this section is is really a, a series of um, formulas. So when we start start talking about exponential decay, so let me show you this example. Exponential decay. The formula for exponential decay is simply f of t is equal to the initial value times e raised to the exponent kt. So understand that we have um, when k is greater than zero, the function models the amount or size of a growing entity. So this is growth. If we look at its counter, or it's counter example, k less than zero, then we're talking about a decay, or decay equation. So what does that look like on a graph? So let me do them side by side, so you can to have a comparison of the two. So I'm gonna bring this over here. So I said this is a decay. And so these are the two diagrams. So if it is increasing, or a growth function where k is greater than zero, you'll notice that left to right, the diagram with the initial value of a sub 0 at the intercept is going to increase exponentially this way in this direction to the right. So it's going through towards a range of positive infinity for the y, where y is equal to, again, the initial uh, value times e raised to the kt. So this is a, val val a model we follow where k is greater than 0, again, a growth function. Now, if we look at its counter, or its opposite, the, uh, the decay function, same graph on the coordinate plane, you're going to notice that this initial value is a little higher because we start up high, and left to right, this is decreasing, going into infinity on the x, or the t, va t value, positive infinity. So we call this decreasing. Again, the same function or the same uh, equation is used where y is equal to a sub 0 e to the kt as a value uh, or the expression where k is less than 0. Okay, so those are the two main ideas for exponential growth and decay models. So let me give you example 1. In example 1, we're simply modeling the growth of the U.S. population. Uh, again, we're going to use what's given to us. So it says basically in a graph, we have a graph where we have 1970, and the U.S. population in millions is a 203.3. Two, oh, no. In 1980, so if you notice, it's a 10-year jump. We're at 226.5 mil. At 1990, we are at 248.7 mil. Okay, continuing the graph, uh, the year 2000, we are at 281.4 mil. And lastly, at 2010, we are at 308.7 mil. So what they're asking here is they want us to find an exponential function or an exponential growth function. Obviously, this is a growing uh, that models the data for 1970 to, to uh, 2010. So in part A, we would use our formula where our initial value, um, which would be A, is equal to A sub 0 e to the kt. So in our case, this would start with A is equal to 203.3, because that's our initial value, times E, natural base E, raised to the KT. Now, um, it says we're given that 308.7 mil is the population in 2010, because remember, we're modeling from 1970 all the way to 2010. So we know that if you do the math, we've grown 40 or we've passed have 
40 years past, right, basically. Uh, you obtain that by taking 2010, take away 1970, and you have 40 years. So that is our T. Okay, so we know that A is the 308.7 because this is the value we would expect 40 years later. We initially start at 1970 with A sub 0. So using our formula, we are now going to throw this information into the formula and solve for K. So we start with the 308.7, which are, is uh, our final value, equal to 203.3 e to the k times 40. Because remember, t is 40. All right, and so now we solve for k. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide by 203.3 on both sides. All right, so this all cancels. This leaves you with um, E raised to the 40K is equal to 308.7 divided by 203.3. We then want to take the natural log of both sides. So we'll take a natural log of the left side and natural log of the right side. Now our natural log and natural base E are going to cancel out, leaving us 40K is equal to the natural log of the fraction 308.7 divided by 203.3. All right, and so a little bit of math. If we're solving for k, last step will be to divide by 4. So all of that divided by 4, by 40, I'm, just, oh, I'm sorry. So that leaves us k is equal to the natural log of 308.7 over 203.3 all of that divided by 40. You should get approximately 0 0.01. So that indicates that the growth rate is about 1% for the growth rate. And that's what we're solving for. Okay, in part B, the question is asking to find the year in which the U.S. population will reach 335 million. So in that case, we're going to say then 335 is equal to 203.3. Again, E raised to the 0 0.01 T. This time we're looking for T. So I'm going to divide by 203.3 on both sides. Okay, and then uh, this leaves us 335 divided by 203.3. That's equal to e to the 0.01t. Again, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Remember, natural log and e cancel on the left. If you want, you can flip it around. If it makes your life easier. I know it makes my life easier. So I have 0.01t is equal to the natural log of 335 divided by 203.3. And therefore, last step, divide by 0 0.01. So therefore, t in our case is equal to approximately 50. OK, so you could try that on your calculators. This is part B. So by year 50, we're at 2020 based on this model, right? All right, we'll try a couple others. All right, let's look at uh, example two, carbon dating. Carbon dating is another type of question. Carbon 14 dating. In this question, we are going to assume we're going to use the same formula. So we're going to use the exponential growth and decay. So this is a equals a sub zero e raised to the kt. And so in the question, it begins with use the fact that after 5,715 years, a given amount of carbon-14 will have decayed to half of the original amount. Um, 
to find the exponential decay model for carbon-14. So we're going to begin with saying then that means that A uh, sub 0 over 2 is equal to A sub 0 E raised to the KT. I know it's weird, but we do use this value. And so we know that T is equal to 5,715, that's for sure. Um, and then A is half of the original amount, so it has to be half of this. That's why this becomes A sub 0 over 2. So this gives us 1 half is equal to E to the 5,715K. We'll take natural log of both sides. The natural log and E cancel. We're left with natural log of 1 half is equal to the natural log of 5,000. I'm sorry, that cancels, so n never mind the natural log again. It'll just be 5,715k. Our last step is simply to divide by 5,715. Divide by 5,715, that all cancels. And this leaves us k is approximately negative point zero 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 one two one all right in part b in the question you're going to notice um, it, it says in 1947 earthenware jars contain containing what are known as the dead sea scrolls were found uh, by an arab bedouin herdsman Analysis indicated that the scroll wrappings contain 76% of the original carbon-14. Estimate the age. So that's what we're going to do in Part B. So in Part B, again, we have a little bit of information. We know that this is going to be 0 0.76 times A sub 0. And that is equal to the initial A sub 0, E, raised to the negative 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, t and we know we're using this value again over here so um, in this question we're we note that the a sub zeros cancel because they're repeated so we're left with 0.76 is equal to natural base e raised to negative point zero point zero 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 one two one t if i take natural log on both sides Okay, what happens is the natural logs cancel on the right hand side, and I'm left with natural log of 0.76 is equal to negative 0 0.000121 t. Okay, and now uh, understand that we're going to solve for t, so we're going to divide by negative 0 0.000121 on both sides. This leaves us a T value equal to 2,268. So that is what we're estimating, which is basically, in this case, um, what is the approximate age? All right, let's look at example three. And we're gonna be working on this in class uh, on and off, so. This is called, uh, a new formula for you, it's called the logistic growth model. Okay, and what you want to do with this formula is if I have f of t equal to c over 1 plus a times e raised to the negative bt, Okay, they also give us a second formula where A is equal to C over 1 plus AE raised to the negative BT. All right, we know that in this case C has to be greater than zero and so does B. So they both have to be positive is basically what this is saying. So in this question, we're modeling the spread of the flu. So they start us with a function. So they do give us the function f of t is equal to 30,000 divided by 1 plus 
20e raised to the negative 1.5t. So they're giving us this information. In part A of this question, they're asking us oh, how many people became ill Oh my gosh, became ill when the epidemic began. Okay, so to answer that question using that formula, basically we start with f of 0. So f of 0 is equal to the 30,000 divided by 1 plus 20e raised to the negative 1.5t, where this is going to be 0 because this is when it began, or the initial value. Do a little bit of math, you end up with, in this case, uh, 30,000 divided by 1 plus 20, basically 21, which will leave you 1,429 people initially were ill in this question. All right, when this epidemic began, in part B, we're looking at how many people were ill in the fourth week. So how many people... became ill in the fourth week. So if that is the case, what we're going to start with then is we're going to substitute in 4 now instead of 0. So this becomes f of 4 is equal to 30,000 divided by 1 plus 20e to the negative 1.5 times 4, where this is 4 and this is 4. And so you should end up with a value of 28,583. Same question, same concept. In this case, in part C, they're asking us to answer what is the limiting size. So what is the limiting size of f of t, the population the po that becomes ill, the population that becomes ill. I don't know what I'm, why I'm obsessed with putting an L behind becomes. Have you noticed I've done that three times in this video? Okay, so in this case, that limiting population as a concept is simply the numerator. So if you look at the formula, we have F of T is equal to that c value over 1 plus ae to the negative bt. The, con the constant in this case is the c, so our value to answer this question would simply be the 30,000. As difficult as it may seem, it's actually quite easy. All right. Let's look at example 4. In example four, we're talking about choosing a model for data. And so if I have um, a question where I have age, uh, and I'm comparing that to the percent of the adult size brain, so let's talk, I'll, I'll just sim simplify this to brain size, okay? And so let's say this is my data, and I'm looking at ages one, Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. 
and let's say they're giving us brain size at 30%, at 50%. So if you notice this, this data is um, paired data, so X and Y in a sense. Okay, at 8 years old, you're at 92% of your brain function. At 10 years old, you're at 95%. And at 11, you should be at 99%. So what is the most steadfast way of doing this? So how would you model this, que this question? And so I'm going to show you on Excel in class how to model this data and what type of um, figure to use. You can also use your calculators. So the question they're asking here is simply based on this, what type of function would you use? So what type of function would be of good use to model this data? And so we're going to talk about scatter, scatter plots and linear regression. So we'll do this in class uh, in a minute. I'm going to show you how to do this on Excel. And um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to use your computer. So this is something that you're going to you're going to have to actually do. So we're going to talk about linear regression, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about statistics, something we have already discussed. Apparently, it's linear regressions. Wow. All right. So we'll talk about that. We'll do a couple of examples as well. Um, in example five, we're still choosing a, a model. Um, same thing here for, for comparing linear um, example six. So examples five, four, five, and six so far, we're going to do in class together on Excel. I'm going to show you how to use Excel for that. And uh, we're going to come up with a model. In example six, they do help you come up with a model, but I'm going to walk you through that one together. I don't want to freak you out in the video. And the last one that I do want to discuss with you before I go into Excel is example seven. So we'll talk about example seven. In example seven, we're expressing an exponential model. in base e and so i want you to use the formula where y is equal to a b as a product to the x power which is also equivalent to y equals a e to the natural log base or lo natural log b times x and so in this case they're giving us a function we where we, we have g to the x is equal to 2.577 times 1.017 and this is raised to the x and we want to know uh, at, given that model it, it models a world population g of x and billions x years after 1949 they want us to write the model in terms of base e so I want you to go back and think about the fact that we have y equals a b to the x. This is what this model looks like. This is your a b to the x power. So these are kind of like related terms here. If we want to write this in uh, the equi equivalent base e, so let me actually move this this way. This actually becomes uh, g of x is equal to 2.577 e raised to the natural log of 1.017 all of that times x and so that's all they're asking you to do all right and we'll do a few examples here before we move forward um, in the next lesson